Welcome back. We journey into chapter nine. So in chapter nine, we move from hypothesis testing of one population to hypothesis testing where we have two populations under consideration. And the first cases that we'll be looking at are cases where samples taken are independent. So two samples are called independent if the member sampled from one population does not determine the member sampled from the second population. So let me just give you an example of this briefly. We're gonna look at childcare workers in California as compared to childcare workers in Oregon. So if I pick a childcare worker in California, that will not determine in any way which childcare worker I pick from Oregon. So that's what we mean by independent. So as opposed to independent, samples could be dependent. And this is where a member sampled from one population does determine the member from the second population. So these are some called, sometimes called matched care data. So for example, if I'm studying twins and I pick one twin, then I need to make sure that I pick their own twin so they're paired together if I want to study the relationship between them. So we're gonna just take a look at independent samples first and just write some hypotheses. So researchers believe the mean annual income of childcare workers in California is greater than the mean annual income of childcare workers in Oregon. So I'm gonna let the population mean the first population, so mu one. So now we have subscripts to indicate our populations. And I'll let that be the population mean annual income of childcare workers in California. All right, so we're looking at the mean for the childcare workers in California. And then our comparison here is that they think that that's greater than the mean of childcare workers in Oregon. So we'll start with our claim here or belief by this researcher, and that's that the population mean child care workers in California, so mu1, our first population, is greater, and then our child care workers in Oregon would be our second population, so mu1 is greater than mu2. All right, and then our alternative hypothesis always gets equality, so alternative I'm sorry, null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis always gets equality. So that will be that the population mean for the California workers is the same and is equal to the child care workers in Oregon. And then as always in hypothesis testing, we'll assume the null hypothesis is true and then go out, go out and gather evidence to see if there's strong evidence against it leading us to believe that the claim is true. Okay, so we'll get to a hypothesis test in a bit, but let's just go ahead and write some more hypotheses. All right, number two, a researcher wishes to test the claim that the proportion of commuters, I'm just gonna emphasize that right away, proportion, the proportion of commuters in California who carpool is less than the proportion of commuters in Colorado who carpool. So now that we're dealing with proportions, the population parameter will be P for population proportion. And we'll let the first population be our California group. So we have our proportion in California is less than the proportion in Colorado. All right, so our claim is that the mean, not the mean, the proportion, the proportion of those who commute in California is less than the proportion that commute in Colorado. All right, and then the null hypothesis will be that those two proportions of people who carpool are equal. Okay, so it should be pretty straightforward. Um, so a greater than here is our right tail test. And our less than is our left tail test. So these problems are gonna be pretty straightforward when I, we get to our calculator. So very similar to what we've done before, just branching into two populations. 
All right, researchers claim the mean recovery time from a cold for patients treated with a multivitamin differs from the mean recovery time for a cold for patients treated with a placebo. All right, so our first mean will be patients treated with a multivitamin. And then differs as always is R not equal to. So our two tail test. And then our null hypothesis is they are equal. All right. So there's our claim. All right, one more. A veterinarian claims that the percentage of dog owners who brush their dog's teeth regularly is greater than the proportion of cat owners who brush their cat's teeth regularly. All right, so our claim here, the proportion of dog owners greater than the proportion of cat owners who regularly brush their teeth regularly. And then no hypothesis is equality. Okay, and of course that is a right tail test. All right, so we are definitely going to be taking advantage of technology to help us with these hypothesis tests. The test statistic or test value formula here. So we are going to be looking at T in this section, because when we're studying hypothesis testing of two population means, and I'm gonna do this section where the population standard deviations are unknown. So unknown, and I apologize, I forgot to say the word population there. So we always know sample standard deviation if we have sample data. The key is if we don't know our population standard deviations, that's when we have to rely on T values. And with two populations, this will be called a two sample T test. So the test value formula, we know all of the symbols, but it does get a little tedious to do by hand. So we're gonna be relying on our calculator. And eventually here, when we enter things, it says requirements. So the parent populations are normal or our samples are reasonably large. So this is the same requirement that we've had previously for a Z test or a T test. And the only other added part here is that when we're having our two populations of consideration, we're going to assume that the variances of the two populations are not the same. So I know we don't work with variance a lot. You can also think of it as we'll assume the standard deviation of the two populations are not the same, not equal. So basically this word pooled, pooling, if we pool the variances, it would mean that we're assuming they're the same. If we're not pooling them, it means we're assuming they're not the same. So all of our problems, we will be not pooling our variance. So we can then move on and look at the actual test itself and let technology help us with a lot of this.